I thought you didn't leave your vehicle unattended running, did you? What's up, man? You didn't leave your vehicle unattended running with the keys inside of it, did you? That would be a policy violation. Would it? It would be. All right. Let me just make sure the keys are in it. Yep, key right there. Huh? Proven guilty right now. Keys are in it. Hey, would you, uh, would you, hey, would you like to, uh, would you like to, uh, let your supervisor know? Not today? I said have a good day. I've got uh, stuff to do, okay? Uh, well, it's a, it's a pretty major policy violation. Okay. Yeah, I'm going, sir. Have you ever read your policy before? I, I kind of know it by heart. Hey! You that guy's supervisor? I'm one of the shift supervisors. Oh, okay. Well, I'd like to uh, make you aware of a policy violation. Okay. Don't know the score. Uh. Keep trying to close back on us. Okay. All right. And what's your name? First Sergeant David Bland. First Sergeant David yes, Bland. I'm Kyle Jocelyn. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, I saw him go inside and he left his keys in the vehicle with it running okay and you're not supposed to leave your vehicles yeah. unattended with the keys inside exactly. now if it was a keyless car he could do it but you know he's yeah. got keys in ignition all someone's got to do is break the window and they're gone exactly you know all the equipment you, in there you remember his name i don't but not, I, I can find it pretty easy i got it earlier that was the one that just left yeah okay. i got it earlier but you know, what's what's your process for this well, I'll track him down, and then uh, probably call him back up here, and uh, we'll okay. sit down, right. discuss what the policy is. Um, obviously, anytime they, anytime they violate policy, procedure, stuff like that, then we have to do a, an internal investigation on this. There's not much investigating. It's really like, hey, this is the complaint I got. What's your reasoning behind it? Yeah. Can you explain to me why you violated policy? Yeah. If there isn't a legitimate reason why they violate policy, then it gets documented in their uh, performance. No reviews. exigent circumstances or anything exactly. like that. Um, so, it, I mean, it'd just be a written, I mean, just yes. a verbal or a written, yes. you know, reprimand. I mean, it's not that big a deal, no, it, not to me, but... It becomes a huge deal when it becomes a, a repeated pattern. Or or if something did happen, someone broke the window and took exactly. it off, then it'd be exactly. a big, big deal. And, and that's why we try to do those those verbal or written reprimands early. So hopefully it establishes in their mind, hey, I need to be more mindful of this. Yeah, yeah. I, coming from when I started, everybody, you saw everybody, they pull in the QT, they'd be three or four deep, they get out and go get a cup of coffee, they're all leave their cars running. Yeah. And uh, that's that's been a big thing for us here lately is, one, somebody can steal it. Number two, what kind of example are you setting for the public by yeah. leaving your car running, you're not in it, gas is yeah. 320 I think last yeah. night when I filled up my, my personal truck so. yeah I'm just curious you ever heard of me yes sir yeah I have this is the first time I've ever I've yeah. ever met you and spoke with you but I'm a, I'm a decent person as long as you treat me right yeah that's uh, how it goes as long as you don't do anything stupid or say anything stupid I mean oh, you yeah. know you'll be fine yes sir Chuck, Chuck can't seem to keep his mouth shut so I don't know if you yeah. saw his latest video I really don't really go down the path come I on know. like and subscribe I to actually me, please. got a I got a complaint probably Oh no, oh no. Hold on, hold on. I've read your policy thoroughly. You're not using tobacco right now, are you? I am. And I saw you in the vehicle, you're using a tobacco product in the vehicle, and while you're speaking to a citizen, is a policy violation. Well, actually, using the vehicle is not. It is. Because I'm not smoking. It's even smokeless tobacco is a violation well, in, in the county vehicle. If, if that's the case, Man, I'm I, I have read your policy front I'm, to back. I'm good with it. <laughs> Yeah. Good. Hey. T typically hey. a call, you I get what? rid of it. And I'll get let out, you slide. Don't worry about it. It's not about letting me slide. No, no, no. You put me in check. I'm, no. I'm good with that. No. Um, let, people who treat me right, I, I could care less. Yeah. You know, it's not a big deal to me. Yeah, I think, I uh, think I got a complaint on the phone six, eight months ago. Yeah. From some gentleman in Arizona, and he had seen a, a YouTube video. Oh. He was, he went down a rabbit hole YouTube watching YouTube videos. Yeah. Well. And it was, I forget the user. It was. SC Free SC Press? Free Press or something Yeah, like yeah. Had posted one. I think it was one of our day shift guys. And he saw it, and he was appalled by the behavior of that, that deputy. So. 
and yeah. that video I guess was probably like six eight months old at that point so I had to I had to let his supervision know so they could look into it yeah yeah so I mean I just I've been watching you guys for three and a half years yeah. since I got trespassed from a public meeting for doing nothing wrong and uh, also got trespassed from a state park for open carrying when I had a CWP and and I was also licensed hunting and fishing yeah. which gives me two statutory rights but yep. people don't know the law and I even had the law printed out handed to handed it to baby Bobo you know Austin Bobo mm -hmm. Lieutenant Bobo's son and he refused to even look at the law that gave me the right to open carry in the park and went to charge me with the uh, two-year felony of trespassing in a state park which is Egregious to me, I think, for someone who is, you know, following a statutory well, law. Um, I'm really thankful for the new uh, constitutional carry law that they just recently well, signed. Well, it's in. not quite constitutional It's not quite carry. constitutional. It's the closest thing we've had in this yeah, state. Yeah, so, definitely. definitely. Uh, that cuts a lot of it out. Yeah. Uh, that's actually been some of our recent in-service training is going over that, letting these guys know, hey, you can't just, if somebody's carrying a gun, you can't go up to them and... Nope. Like, you can have a conversation with them. If they're willing to talk with you, then you can have a conversation with them. But it's just not RAS armed, or probable cause exactly, at all. Just because they have a gun, you can't go up and try to take it and run it, like find out if they can legal possess or not. Like nope. you, you have to have legal standing to do that. You'd have so. to know if they were a felon or, or something exactly. like that. So, yep. Yep. So, you, uh, I'm, I'm all about the Second Amendment, so I think it's a uh, Well, in the right you know, direction. I've heard that from a lot of, you know, so-called Republicans that, you know, love their gun rights, but not when you do it in front of them. So, you know, it's most of them don't don't have the love for the Second Amendment. They might say it, but then when you do it in front of them, they think it's crazy for you yep. to do it. You know, like their safety is more important than my safety, which, you know, the courts think it is. Well, pe people but, forget about what the Second Amendment is really about. You know, it's, it's not about hunting. It's not about fishing. No. It's about protection from a tyrannical government. It's, it's just the one sentence is all I need, you know. The right of the people keeping bare arms shall not, shall be, infringed. not be infringed. And it's the only one that says, do not mess with this. Exactly. Yet it's got a ton of laws against it. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, uh, you heard this rumor about Lieutenant Wendy Bradley? I don't really get into the rumor mills. Have you heard any facts about Lieutenant Wendy Bradley? So well, maybe you could put the plane in to your higher ups because I know she's kind of above you right Lieutenant Wendy Bradley yeah so me. so when I went to go see Chuck Wright on Saturday this last Saturday and uh, put a video out on him that didn't make him look too good uh, and he asked me he said what do you do and I told him it was none of his business and he got pretty upset about it so three days later my job gets a phone call from an agent that says he's with the OIG, okay? And it's uh, Dustin McClary. Done a little investigating. He used to be a former deputy here. And now he's a Department of Corrections, OIG for the Department of Corrections. So um, Lieutenant Winnie Bradley gave him a call and asked him if he could find out where I worked, okay? And so then he found out where I worked, proceeded to call my boss and make false allegations against me. And my boss said, that's, that's crazy. He'd never do anything like that. And I mean, he's always around, you know, it's completely false. And she hung up the phone and called me immediately and gave me Wendy Bradley's number and the agent's number. And I called him and, and he wouldn't tell me. He just said, I work for the OIG. I called the OIG. They said it didn't have an agent by that name that worked there. And so I had to keep calling and calling. Finally found out he works for the Department of Corrections. Now, why would she call a Department of Corrections employee to find out where I work and tell him false allegations to make to my employer to try and get me fired? Doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense to me. Three days after I put a video out, you know, and go see Chuck Wright and kind of embarrass him in front of all of his deputies. And, you know, it, uh, it's definitely fishy. You're a captain. Um, starts with R. He's a black man. Very nice. Uh, special service captain? Raymond yeah. Guest? Raymond Guest, yeah. I talked to him. He said he's going 
talked to her Monday. She said she wasn't here today. And he's going to talk to her Monday and, and figure out what the heck's going yeah, on. He's the, he's the captain over special services and warrants and courtroom security falls under him. So, so what is she over? Yeah. She's over courtroom security, unless something's changed. Courthouse security. Thank you. She's a lieutenant over there. That's kind of strange for courthouse security to be trying to find out where I work. Kind of a weird investigation for a courthouse security officer to be doing. Yeah. Um, Would I you agree? It, it sounds strange to me. I mean, if, if you're honest, you don't look like a fool. If if you try to, you know, act like it's not strange, it looks like you're hiding something. Yep. But, you know, it's it's the retaliation. I've had it. I've had it for the past three and a half years. And you know, I I have all these videos of these people doing these things to me that I had statutory rights and never put a single video out. And finally became too much, and I finally started doing it a month ago. Yeah. And it's it's going crazy. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's a lot of work. I just wanted them to do right. That was it. I, I held on all this for three and a half years, you know. And I, I put a video out, and they start calling my job to try and get me fired. And doesn't make me want to stop. Sounds like your job's doing the right thing. If there's no basis for firing you, they're not oh. firing you. So. Yeah, I mean, my job, like I said, they, they know me. And they, and they know the situation with you guys and the retaliation that I've had. And, and my, my employer said, you know, these, these are completely false allegations. You're, you're crazy. You know, we know what you're doing. You know, I saw this video that you put out three days ago. <laughs> you know, doesn't look too good for them. And, and for them to think, you know, I wouldn't track it all down when I do what I do, kind of, kind of funny. Yeah. And then she that calls. She sense. called me tonight. This is Lieutenant Bradley. Oh, hey. You need to stop calling this number. This is the wrong number to reach me at. So stop calling this number. Ma'am, I, I haven't called your number, ma'am. She called me tonight because I, I, I made a video with uh, her. Uh, was it Raymond Geist? What was it? Uh, Raymond Gist. Raymond Gist. Yeah. Him. Him in it, and the agent, and all the phone calls I made with him. And you know, it just doesn't doesn't look good for him. Doesn't look good at all. But I, I will say, Geist or Guest, he's he sounds like a good guy. I mean, he said he's gonna look he into is. it. He's gonna figure it out, and he's gonna call me Monday. He's a good one. For, like I said, he's special services. I don't deal with him a lot, but yeah. what I've what I've dealt with him, he's he's pretty jam up. So. He did, does he fly a helicopter? No, he doesn't. Okay. Like designated pilot now. All right. We got a couple others that actually well, have pilot's license. We know Chuck does. We paid for it. So he could fly around and enjoy the view up in the sky on the no, tax I know dollar. He has, I know he has his pilot's license. Yeah, he, he got it not too long ago. You know, he made sure that we paid for it so he could have fun in that helicopter. All right, man. Well, I'll let you get back to work. Yes, sir. I appreciate you talking to me. Yep, anytime. You seem all right. You're off the list. So. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> I'll see you, man. All right, man. Thank you.